S&P 500 and NASDAQ closing at all-time highs. The Dow up, gold up, real estate. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another TrendSpider University video. Today, we're going to be learning how to utilize the platform in order to trade just like a quant fund. Before we get into the tools themselves, let's first consider in the most basic terms how a quant fund is going to operate. First, they're going to think through and develop their strategies. Next, they're going to backtest those strategies to see if they work on the assets that they want to trade. And finally, when they find names that perform well under the strategy, they're going to act when those conditions present themselves again in the future. You could do all of this and more using the tools on TrendSpider. So let's jump right into it. First, we need to develop our strategy. For the sake of this presentation, I'm going to build out the strategy within the strategy tester, but this can actually be done in any of the tools that we'll be discussing today. So let's say, for example, that you want to test a five minute time frame bearish MACD cross strategy on Apple here. The first thing that we need to do is we need to write out that bearish cross. So to do that, we're going to click add parameter here, say condition, choose indicator, choose MACD, crossed down on indicator, MACD signal. Next, let's add some additional conditions to give this cross a little bit more strength. Since this is a short biased strategy, maybe we only want to be buying when RSI is at more elevated levels. So for this case, we'll define RSI as greater than a constant value of 50. To do that, add parameter here, condition, indicator, relative strength, greater than a constant value of 50. Again, we're trying to short into strength here. So let's define a price condition and say that the current price is greater than it was five candles ago. To do that, add parameter condition, price, close, greater than, price, close. And then we're gonna change this to five candles ago. Now that we've got our entry conditions defined, let's add an exit condition. You could see we offer many different exit condition options, but just to keep things simple, let's say we want to exit after 35 candles have passed. We're going to click here, change this value to 35. I've got the five minute time frame selected. We're looking back 7,000 candles. We're trading on the next open, and this is a short bias trade. Let's run this strategy and see how it performs. I've completed the strategy test and we've got a bunch of data back. So let's go over all of the data that we've gotten back. We can see here we took 22 positions. This begs the question, where did we enter and exit these trades? If we look up on the chart, we can see those entries and exits. Entries are going to be marked in black, exits in either green or red, depending on whether they were winning or losing trades. The next data point of interest is the performance chart. It says 6.72%. This is the net gain of the strategy. So had we taken all 22 of these positions, we would have netted a gain of 6.72%. 4.37% for the asset performance. This is the performance of the asset over the same period of time. So the strategy actually beats the asset performance. Over here on the right-hand side, we have tabular data. This is just a breakdown of all of the positions that we took. We could see 22 positions. Our win rate is 59%. Our losing rate is 41%. We have an average win of 0.98%, an average loss of negative 0.67 for an average return of 0.3%. So clearly this strategy performs quite well on Apple. Now that we've seen the results here, and we know that the strategy has been working recently, the next step we want to take is we want to be alerted any time these conditions are met on this name. That way, we don't have to be staring at the charts waiting for the conditions occur, wasting valuable time in front of our screens. To create an alert out of these conditions, we simply need to click the alert me next time this happens button. So I'm going to do that. It's going to bring up the multi-factor alert, and we can see that the conditions contained within the multi-factor alert are the exact same as our entry conditions here in the strategy tester. We want to go ahead and give this a name. We'll call it 5-Minute MACD Bearish. We need to choose how long this is going to live in our system. I'm going to make it last for the next 30 days. 
And then we need to choose how many times we want to be triggered on this. A trigger is going to occur when the instance occurs one time. Over the next 30 days, it is possible that these conditions could occur multiple times. So if we want to be alerted any time these conditions occur over the next 30 days, we need to choose multiple triggers and we can select up to 20. So I'm going to max that out and say create alert. Now we don't see that alert anywhere on our chart, but it is active in the system. And if you'd like to see it, you can add an alerts widget via the sidebar. I'm going to turn on my sidebar here. I've already got my alerts widget up, and we could see at the top of my alerts widget the Apple 5-Minute MACD bearish alert living in my system. So the next time these conditions present themselves, I'm going to get an alert to let me know. Let's keep moving. Now that we've got the alert set on Apple, let's say you've created a list of names that you'd like to trade this strategy on, and you'd like to add this same alert to those names as well. I've got my MACD actionable names list up here, and I'm just going to pick the first name on the list, NVIDIA. By clicking on that name, that adds that name onto my chart. And now I want to add this alert onto NVIDIA. In order to do that, I'm going to hover over the Apple alert here. I'm going to click on this clone icon in the top left corner. It's going to bring up the create multi-factor alert on NVIDIA. You'll notice my entry conditions are the exact same my expiry is the same, my triggers are the same. I say create alert, and now that alert is on NVIDIA as well. You could see how easy it is to add this alert to any name that you want to receive it on. Let's keep moving. Now, on to the last piece of this puzzle. And that is, if you're creating an alert on a symbol, it's likely not meeting that trading criteria at this time, right? With that in mind, you may want to know if there are any names that are meeting this criteria right now. We can actually utilize these exact same conditions in the scanner to find any names that are meeting this criteria right now. So let's learn how to do that. First, we need to grab those conditions and save them as a script. By saving them as a script, we'll be able to load that script into the scanner easily. So if we click on the pencil icon right here, that's going to bring up the edit multi-factor alert option. If I come up to where it says script actions, I'm going to click that. I'm going to say save as template. We're going to title this something we can remember, 5-minute MACD bear, and say save. Now that it's listed over here on the left-hand side in our script manager, I know that it's saved as a script and I'll be able to load it into the scanner. So we can X out of these items. I've got my scanner down here at the bottom of my screen. I'm gonna to go to script actions. I'm gonna say load from template. I'm gonna search five minute MACD bear. Here it is. I'm gonna choose this script. And now it's loaded those conditions into the scanner. I can now run this scan and see if there are any names that are meeting this criteria right now. So let's do that. As you can see, we now have a list of names that are all meeting this criteria that we could potentially trade. If we wanted to, we could even run all of these names through the strategy tester to see if any of them perform particularly well. So there you have it, folks, a quick lesson on how to utilize the platform to trade just like a quant fund. I hope this was helpful for you, and we look forward to seeing you in the next TrendSpider University video. Happy trading, and catch you next time.